Hi everyone. A question was asked as to how to make light go through materials in Maya. Now, in, for some of you who were working on 2017, uh, you use the backlighting option under your materials. That option has gone away and has been replaced by using subsurface scattering in 2018 and above. So this is how we're going to be working in this version. I'm working on 2019. So let me go ahead and get started. For this, I'm going to create a lamp with the same uh, outlines that I uh, showed you guys in class, the Illustrator files we had created. So I'm going to create a quick lamp and then I'm going to light a little scene with that lamp. So for that, let me go ahead and import the outlines that we used in class. So I'm going to go ahead and import the lamp base curve. And there it is. Let me just go ahead and bring that up so we can see it. And I'm probably going to scale it as well. So I want to bring it to be rather small. And let me go ahead and switch this view to my front view. Focus on it. And let me bring that to the bottom, that uh, the gizmo to the bottom. Let me position this on the world right on the origin. So for that, I'm going to sw switch to my respective viewport and I'm going to snap to the grid. So there it is. So with that done, whoops, actually, I just noticed that this did not align all the way to the corner. So let me fix that really quick. Boom. And then let me go ahead and snap it again and snap it back. There it is. So now I have it snapped to the origin. So with that done, I'm going to go ahead and revolve this to create a nerve space. So I'm going to go surfaces revolve and then I need to reverse the normals on that. So that actually we see the outside. And so that creates the base of the lamp. Let me now go ahead and import the other outline, which is the one that we use for the lampshade. So I'm going to import that. And that is this little artwork. Let me go ahead and center my pivot on that. And I am going to rotate it 90 degrees so that it actually uh, lines up with the Z axis and center it. So let's go ahead and change my viewport to the top viewport. I'll view that and then press the X key to snap to the grid. And there it is. Let me br bring it up a little bit so that it becomes the bottom of the lampshade. And then I'm going to make a copy and bring that one up and scale it down. So I have my curves set up. Let me select both of them. Surfaces loft. And now I have the lampshade. I'm going to select all the objects and I'm going to delete history. So I'm going to go edit, delete by type history so that there's no connection between the shade and the base and the curves that created them. And then I can go ahead and delete the groups that were brought in when we brought in the shapes. So now I have the actual nerves object. So that's it for that portion. Then I'm going to create some kind of uh, tabletop or something where this is standing. So for that, I'm just simply going to use a plane and I'm going to stretch it out. And then I am going to create a light to light the scene. So for this, I'm going to go to the rendering shelf and I'm going to use a point light in this case. Now the point light will come in at the origin. So it comes in at the zero, zero, zero point. And I want to bring that up somewhere just above the lamp geometry, right? The, the inside lamp post. So let me switch this back to four, four hour wireframe display. And I'm going to place it there. And let's go ahead and try to do a quick render in Arnold. So I'm going to go to Arnold. I am going to open up the Arnold render view and I'm going to run a render. As you can see, there's some kind of light, but not much. So I can go ahead and start increasing my intensity. So let's say I go for something like 15 and I can see the light being projected, but still very dim. So now changing the light values goes between the, it's a combination of working with the intensity of the actual light and the settings under Arnold. Since we're rendering, rendering under Arnold, we have actu uh, actually access to the exposure. So we can increase the exposure to get more light into the scene. That's one way to work things. Let me bring that back to one. I prefer to start working and get as close as possible with my intensity so that I get the light and then I can modify my exposure just by a little bit. Remember also that you can soften the shadows by working with the radius value. So if you increase or decrease the value of the radius, the shadows get softer or sharper depending on what is required for your scene. 
I'm going to use a 0.1 value on this. Remember that uh, these lights uh, in Arno, lights in Arno are, uh, they're uh, quadratic, which means they respect real world um, physics. Therefore, you need to change your decay rate from no decay to quadratic in order to match the how far your light will go based on the intensity of the light. That's why I prefer working with intensity as opposed to exposure. And notice that you also have the ability to increase the amount of samples for shadowing. So if you want to have better shadows, you want to increase the amount of volume samples. So if you do that, this is good. This, these little changes start affecting the render time, obviously, but they give you better quality results. Okay. So let's go ahead and keep these settings as they are right now. Now, the focal point for me now is how do I make that material see through? There's obviously a light in there, but the geometry around the, sh the shade is blocking that light. So to do so, what I want to do is I want to assign a material to my object. I want to select it, right click and go to assign new material. And from the new material window, I'm going to choose an AI standard sh surface shader, which is what we have been using. Now in this material, in the past, there used to be, for those of you with 2017, under the base values, there was something called backlighting that you could see there in order to have light come through. That has been replaced by a combination of things in the newer versions of um, Arnold, which uh, includes making sure that you activate subsurface scattering and combine that with the thin wall option under geometry. So if you select thin wall, then the subsurface scattering will activate automatically to start allowing the light to see through as if it was a uh, subsurface, but in, in it, not just like with skin or marble, like we have seen in class, but actually with any material. So you have the ability to start controlling how much light goes through that particular object. And as you can see, the overall lighting in my scene increased. So I can see the quality and I can control how much light I want to allow to go through or how little, and that gives density to that particular material while still make maintaining clear geometry, creating fairly realistic looking materials. Remember, you activate the thin wall, and then you go back to subsurface scattering to start working with it. You do not change the opacity. You do not change the transmission. This is basically a combination of thin wall under geometry and the values under subsurface scattering. So this is how you create materials that allow you to have light that goes through them.